X-Men Blue number 5 by Cullen Bunn and Julian Lopez. As the X-Men face off with the new marauders in a bar, Jimmy Hudson pops his claws and prepares to attack. Soon there's an all-out assault. Mach 2 with Magneto-like metal control, another reality's Quicksilver, and other familiar allies fight against them. As Jean struggles to protect the civilians, the sheriff works to clear them from the area while Mach 2 secures Jimmy. Cyclops is able to blast both her and Quicksilver, but is attacked from behind by armor. Meanwhile, Iceman surrounds Pietro, and Angel fights the other bird-like mutant. The problem is that the fight threatens to burn the bar down. While the fighting ensues, Jean tries to read their minds and suddenly senses another's presence. Miss Sinister is apparently pulling their strings. She explains that there are other worlds than this, and some of them, mutants are involved in cataclysmic events. Some are not. She studied them well, except for their clawed friend, who went rogue. During their conversation, Jimmy retracts his claws and runs out the door. Quicksilver tries to give chase, but Iceman freezes his feet. Meanwhile, he monologues, and Beast knocks him out. Mach 2 gives the order to follow Jimmy, and armor covers them out the door. Cyclops stays to protect Jean, while the rest of the X-Men follow the Marauders. Miss Sinister explains to her that their memory loss is a byproduct of their reality leaping. She offers an olive branch to them, however. Jimmy Hudson isn't prone to telepathy, therefore more trouble than he's worth. When Iceman, Angel, and Beast catch up to Jimmy, the Marauders have all left. As Jean and Scott catch up to them, she suggests they do the same. They say their goodbyes to the sheriff and ask Jimmy to join them. Back home in Madripoor, Magneto takes a great interest in this new mutant. Though there's something very different about him, Magneto asks why she didn't take him to the school, and she says it would likely get Kitty asking a lot more questions than they're prepared for. Besides, she'd love to have a Wolverine on the team, which Jimmy balks at in name anyway. The issue ends with Jean staring at a token. A small red crystal emblazoned with the image of Miss Sinister stares back at her. What kind of power does she have? And will they be up to the challenge? We'll have to wait and see as this issue is left to be continued. You know, this is the X-Men I've been waiting for. I knew it was going to be a little while for these writers to get their legs, but as is being improvingly proved in X-Men Gold as well, both of these titles are on the way up. For me, there's always been something special about this squad. Whether it was from the classic lineup or what they brought to the table in X-Factor, New Blood at the Creative Helm is really showing that this book deserves the accolades it's getting. The artwork is sharp and crisp, and Cullen Bunn is curving the story in spectacular fashion. I give this one a 9 out of 10. If you like this video, there's hundreds more like it, spanning several current and classic story arcs. Click the videos here for more playlists. This video is also accompanied by my blog at nerdiestkidyouknow.blogspot.com or nerdiestkidyouknow.com. You can also follow links on my Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter pages, as well as a link to this very issue for sale on my eBay page by clicking below. For the nerdiest kid you know, I'm Sam Torito. Thanks for watching.